So I will start in, let's say, different way than you are usual. So everybody saying about to working from home. I'm working from the car, as you see at this point. No worry, I'm not driving right now. I just stepped by uh, just to say hello. And of course, in a few minutes, I will be at my home. So I will start to be much more active here. But it's not about me. It's, it's all about Simon Cotter, our special guest today. And Simon decided to speak today with us about what's new in the Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager 3.3. Uh, so Simon, thank you if, uh, to having you here again. Yeah, thank you, Pavel. My, it's my pleasure, you know. Si Simon, Simon is our OVP expert, but what is more important in the Oracle, he's doing a brilliant job from the virtualization point of view, not only in the OIVM project, so Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager, but also in the virtual box and the Oracle VM. Uh, last webinar we have about the virtual box. Today it's time to talk about the OLV OLVM. So we'll, of course, concentrate what's new, but I also think it's a good idea, Simon, to tell oh, why the Oracle actually is are in, in the projects like uh, such as Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager. So yeah. I think the stage is yours, Simon. Uh, I'm going on mute, disable the video, and I will <laughs> see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you, Powell. Good luck. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, as you as you understood, my name is Simon Cotter. I'm I'm senior manager in the product management team of uh, for Oracle Linux and virtualization at Oracle. So, uh, and just to give you a, a quick uh, or a briefing overview of myself, I joined the the company. I joined Oracle 16 years ago. I had been uh, a consultant for for 11 years at Oracle, working on. Yeah, different Oracle products starting from the Oracle database arriving to applications and obviously also uh, Linux and virtualization. Uh, and around, yeah, five years ago, I had the opportunity to join the, the product management team for, for Linux and virtualization. And, and over there, my, my new job started. Uh, yeah, so today I'm and today I'm, I'm responsible for both the, the Oracle Linux as well as the virtualization uh, for x86 uh, solutions that we have at Oracle and, and obviously when we say virtualization like Powell was saying uh, we have a server virtualization solutions like Oracle VM or Oracle Linux KVM with Oracle Linux virtualization manager as well as VirtualBox uh, as, as our top class uh, desktop virtualization solution. So uh, today I'm going to give you a quick overview of, of Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager 4.3. Uh, it's the, a release that we, we just announced uh, last month. Um, it's, it's not the first one. So we have to say that uh, we started to work on, on the overt open source project more than a couple of years ago. Um, and last year in June, so June 2019, we, we announced the first Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager release that was based on over 4.2. And, and while today I'm going to give you an overview of, of what we have there, so it's uh, generally available also now with, with Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager 4.3 release. Uh, yeah, so yeah, this is our standard safe harbor statement. Obviously, it could be that maybe I'm, I'll talk of something that can happen in the next future or can happen in the future, but it's important to know that there is no commitment on to deliver on what, what I'm going to talk for, for the next future, right? Um, so yeah, let's start from the, the, the a quick overview or related to the Oracle Linux virtualization solution. So uh, in a virtualization solution, as, as you know, we have the compute side and the management side of the solution at the end. On the compute side, we have today Oracle Linux KVM. Oracle Linux KVM relies on Oracle Linux 7 release with the unbreakable enterprise kernel release 5 so UEK release 5 and and for uh, people that maybe do not know uh, what UEK is uh, it's the kernel that Oracle build it's the kernel that your Oracle develops and it's the kernel where we address all the requirements coming at Oracle internally because we are also one of the first consumers of the same Oracle Linux 
Uh, and when I say internally, it's important to know that this is the kernel that he, today is also leveraged by the Oracle Cloud, as well as Oracle engineering systems like the Exadata. And at the same time here, uh, or this one is the kernel where we address all the possible requirements coming from our customers. Requirements that could be to have a particular feature enabled or could be to have a particular driver updated. Um, so this is the kernel where, where, where uh, we, we develop all those kind of requirements that we have. And this is related to the compute side of the solution. While moving to the management side of the solution, uh, again, we, we have Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager. Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager is uh, based on over. And when I say it's, it's based, uh, it means that uh, we build our Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager starting from over. That said, it's important to know that we do not fork. So our solution does not strip away or add other features into the same solution. and uh, we expose the same web services API that are there on over. So there is at the end, no technical difference between what is there on over and, and what is available on Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager. Um, with, with Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager, and, and now I continue to, 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 to name it uh, OLVM because it's, it's much faster. Uh, so on OLVM, we also have the option uh, to, to have um, uh, hard partitioning. Hard partitioning is the opportunity to get your VMs pinned on the physical cores and uh, and while you have Oracle products running on top, uh, pay the licenses for the Oracle product running on top only for the CPUs used by the VM. Hard partitioning, the hard partitioning policy is a policy today available only for Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager and Oracle Linux KVM. It's also available for Oracle VM Server, obviously. Uh, yeah, the important thing to know is that we do not just build Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager. We have our engineering team working on it. We have our quality assurance and quality engineering teams testing the solution. So before releasing uh, OLVM, we always execute a huge list of tests on the same. And based on the huge list of tests, we decide to possibly have a GA release or to possibly wait for the same GA release because obviously we, we always want to get something reliable and, and production ready for, for our customers. Uh, the so other Simon, it just uh, about coming back to the hard partitioning. So it means that we can today take the Oracle VM or the OLVM and get, let's say, the advantage of using only the or paying the, the vCPUs here. Uh, yeah. for all of the workloads from the Oracle. Yeah, let's let's do an example. Uh, suppose that I have a, a, an Oracle database, and and for this Oracle database uh, service, I need eight virtual CPUs. If you run the Oracle database or any other x86 virtualization solutions uh, based on the Oracle policies, you will be required that you pay for the Oracle database licenses for all the CPUs that you have on the physical server. With OLVM, you have the option to apply the hard partitioning, and we have documentation dedicated to this on, on the VM, and so get the VM pinned on course following uh, uh, rules that we have in place. And with those rules in place, you will have the opportunity to pay only the eight virtual CPUs for the Oracle database license. Right, so this is okay. Mm -hmm. This kind of thing means that a huge saving, if you want, in terms of licensing of Oracle products running on top. That said, if we talk of the Oracle Linux KVM and Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager solution, we do not have any license. So with Oracle Linux and and OLVM, uh, we first of all, the entire software, the entire solution is public available for free. The entire solution can be updated for free. So all the RPMs, all the updates for both Oracle Linux KVM, Oracle Linux 7, as well as Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager are available for free. You can just connect to yum.oracle.com and over there you can download ISO, you can download updates for any Linux distribution and for any Linux uh, component, like for example, Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager. 
Optionally, okay, thank you. Optionally, optionally, you can get the support for Oracle Linux. It's optional. Uh, obviously, strongly suggest if, if you are going to run production environments, because in case of issue at that point, you can get in touch with us in, uh, to, to get those sorted out uh, as fast as possible. Um, and the, the subscription for Oracle Linux, if you get the Oracle Linux Premier support, uh, it's per physical server. So it does not matter how many VMs you are going to run or how many Oracle Linux VMs you are going to create. The subscription is per physical server, right? And it's a fixed price per physical server. And on top of the physical server, you can run and create uh, hundred or thousands of Oracle Linux VMs. There's no issue. All of them are included into the Oracle Linux Premier Support subscription. Uh, so one, one unique subscription per physical server that includes everything, all the possible options around Oracle Linux. Mm -hmm. uh, Simon, question, we have a question. Uh, how, how many times you planning to have the releases, uh, let's say for 2020? Let's say every month, let's say three months, six months, the average, of course, not exactly because it's hard to say. The average of, I didn't get. Uh, the average of uh, the new releases. Uh, uh, yeah, now, now what we have uh, on our plans is to, to target a possible maintenance release for 4.3. And, uh, and following that one, uh, uh, the, the next target is obviously to, to, to build uh, and to have our own 4.4 release. Today, yeah, as you maybe already know, the Overt uh, community is um, working. Today, uh, the Overt community is really working on two different threads. One of them is related to 4.3, where we already had, if I'm not wrong, the first, no, sorry, the second 4.3.10 um, uh, beta release or candidate release, but at the same time, we have an alpha release dedicated to 4.4. So our, our, uh, our plans are to keep our own release um, as near as possible to the community one, um, and mostly when a new major release is going to come out. Uh, yeah, that said, obviously, again, uh, before releasing our own uh, build, we always want to, to verify and test different things. But we also think that in the time, those tests will be even faster just because uh, on each life cycle for OLVM, we are going to introduce more automated tests for the same. So this kind of thing will help us to be even faster to possibly test the, the build or the new build for, for OLVM. Uh, yeah, we, I, I can see another question. Uh, it's related to the subscription cost for Azure um, uh, for, for Oracle Linux. Uh, yeah, while talking of uh, third-party cloud, like Azure, like AWS, like others, uh, we have dedicated rules for, for the cloud. Now, I do not remember all the possible details related to Azure, but I remember that uh, you have a, uh, a support subscription per virtual CPUs based. Um, so this is the, the, I know that there's this kind of policy in place for third party cloud vendors. The important thing to know is that on Oracle Cloud, um, there's no super subscription for Oracle Linux. So you can leverage and use Oracle Linux for free on the Oracle Cloud and also get the support for free on the Oracle Cloud while using Oracle Linux. Um, yeah, so, and just to give you another another uh, overview of the history, again, we started more than a couple of years ago to work on 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 overt and OLBM, and we started to 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 work on this just because our customers were looking for an enterprise KVM management solution. Uh, KVM was even three years ago. KVM was a supported hypervisor on top of Oracle Linux, but all our customers were looking and was were asking us to get. Uh, a solution, an enterprise KVM management solution, able to manage more hypervisors at the same time, and then as well as manage storage and networking, and also a cloud-ready solution. So a solution where you can have different roles on the same interface, where you can have the cloud administrator and the cloud user or the, the cloud consumer. So the user that at the end can only create VMs, stop and start VMs, and that's all. Based on some quota or the, the number of resources that the user um, uh, as, as available. Uh, yeah, moving ahead. So, um, 
again, we introduced the OLVM 4.3. Uh, the important thing to know here, for example, on yam.tocal.com, uh, you can see the, the two repositories dedicated to OLVM 4.3 release. The other important thing that I want to mention is that we also have uh, our own documentation team. Uh, they are doing a really great job. So we, we today have a full documentation library dedicated to Oracle Linux virtualization manager. Our target is also to uh, improve release by release the documentation that we have in place for, for Oracle Linux virtualization manager. Uh, yeah, so here we have the list of features that, that uh, where we introduced the support for OLVM 4.3. Um, or that today are available with OLBM 4.3 because some of them were, were also available with, with the previous 4.2 release. Uh, between them, obviously, we have the snapshot uh, capability and role-based access. Those were there also with the 4.2 release. Uh, with 4.3, we introduced the option to run the self-hosted engine. So, you know, run the engine and the management solution. So run the management solution on top of the cluster, on top of the KVM cluster that it's managing. We introduced the support for the Gluster integration. Gluster is, for example, another option available with Oracle Linux Premier support. Um, and uh, we have uh, our own Gluster release six. And, and now with OLVM 4.3, we also have the integration between uh, KVM, OLVM, and Gluster. We introduced the support for the Beard B2B uh, utility. Beard B2B is a great utility if you are going to approach, for example, migration from other hypervisors to Oracle Linux KVM or Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager. Uh, we introduced the support for uh, Oracle Linux 8 release, as well as SUSE Enterprise 12 and 15. So uh, SUSE is one of our partners. We work with them. Uh, and together, we got certified both release 12 and release 15 of SUSE Enterprise Linux. <laughs> We introduced the support for the Oracle Database 12C, Release 1, and 18C. 19C was already available with OLVM 4.2. And obviously, into the OLVM 4.3 release, we also have all the bug fixes and all the enhancements that the community built and developed on, on Overt 4.3. At the same time, obviously, uh, it's important to know that when we have our own build, when we have our own OLVM release, uh, we do not strip away any kind of features. So all the features continue to be there. Uh, if those are not supported, it means that our tests indicated that maybe something has to be fixed before supporting those, just because maybe those are, are not really production ready. Uh, that does not mean that the quality of the code is not good. It means that there are maybe some corner cases that could create issues on the production environment. So uh, we again, we, we do not strip away any kind of feature, but at the same time, all the features are there and can be used. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and now I, I, I want to mention one, one important thing related to the compute side of the solution. Uh, on, on, on Oracle Linux KVM, we, we think uh, that we have an enhanced KVM support. So first of all, we have uh, very updated releases for both QEMU and LibVirt. As you can see, we have QEMU 3.1 and LibVirt 5.7, part of Oracle Linux KVM with Oracle Linux 7. And the important thing to know is that on the compute, uh, we have important, important components related to the KVM hypervisor. We have the kernel, and again, here we are using UEK5. We have uh, user space utilities or user space stuff dedicated to the KVM hypervisor like QEMU and LibVirt. On those three components today, uh, my team dedicated to the Oracle Linux KVM or Oracle Linux works in a collaborative way with other teams at Oracle. So the same Oracle Linux KVM that is available today with this solution and that can be installed on, on commodity hardware on any x86 system is the same KVM that we also leverage on engineering systems like Exadata and it's the same KVM hypervisor that we also leverage on the Oracle Cloud as a cloud vendor. So if you think 
there's no other KVM today uh, built with the same kind of experience or built with the same kind of requirements. If you think, uh, this is my, my personal interpretation, but it's real. Uh, on Exadata, Exadata is the injury system for the Oracle database. It's the fastest system where to run an Oracle database today. Uh, and over there, you have the option to, to, to run Oracle as KVM. On this kind of solution, we cannot fail in terms of performance. So over there, the KVM hypervisor cannot fail on performance. So we, we strictly work with the Exadata team and we address all their requirements, all their feedback related to performance. And the same hypervisor is available for you today on-prem, on commodity hardware. We work with the Oracle Cloud team. And while working with the Oracle Cloud team, obviously we, we have other requirements. Obviously performance is still a requirement. It's also very important, but at the same time we have other requirements. Other requirements like, for example, number of VMs, number of disks, amount of memory, number of CPUs, number of virtual CPUs, all of those requirements, again, are there into this Oracle Linux KVM, the same Oracle Linux KVM. And if you think to other, uh, if you think to other enterprise Linux distribution, other enterprise Linux distribution are not leveraged by cloud vendors, are not leveraged by injury systems. And if you think to other cloud vendors, other cloud vendors do not share their uh, cloud hypervisor to get the same running on, on, on prem on your own environment. So this is why I think that it's quite unique what we have there on the compute side of with, with Oracle Linux KVM. Uh, uh, yeah, another 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 important thing to, to, to remind related to, to the compute side as well as the management, we have case plies. Case plies is an utility, again part of the Oracle Linux Premier support that allows to install uh, security fixes for the kernel, the hypervisor, uh, like for example, KVM or QEMU, uh, as well as other user space packages like glibc and OpenSSL. So install security fixes on all of those components without rebooting your systems. And there is no limitation. So all the possible CVEs today are addressed with, with case plies. And case splice is another thing that, for example, we use on the Oracle Cloud because we cannot reboot or we cannot say to our cloud customers, hey, we have to reboot your system, we want to install security fixes. No. And case splice is another, another example of things that we have internally at Oracle for our own requirements that can really help to run your on-prem private, private cloud. Into case splice, lately we also addressed um, another another feature named known exploit detection. So case splice is able to <clears throat> intercept any possible uh, privilege escalation. So if you, for example, installed a security fix by case splice and someone tries to exploit the security hole addressed by this fix, you will receive an alert saying that someone tried to exploit your, the security hole that was there on your system. Okay, moving ahead. Um, yeah, here we have a quick uh, uh, solution overview. As you can see, we have OLVM uh, that can manage Oracle Linux KVM server 7.6, 7.7, 7.update8. And here we have the guest OS that today we support on top of Oracle Linux KVM. So from obviously the enterprise Linux release 5, 6, and 7, uh, uh, SUSE Enterprise Linux 12 and 15, and all the main and today supported uh, Windows desktop and server releases. Windows 2019 is also is also there with the OLVM 4.3. Uh, yeah, before moving to the next concept, I, uh, let me check questions that we have on the chat. Uh, yeah, I'm going to deep dive on the cell on the hosted engine. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that I lost one slide. Yeah. Um, another another thing we we worked on is related to templates. 
So the option to automate the deployment of, of VMs on, on top of Oracle Linux uh, KVM as well as OLVM. Um, we, uh, some months ago, we built our first Oracle Linux 7 update 7 template. What is, it's a ready to run VM with Oracle Linux 7.7 .7 installed and ready to run. The cool option is that the template had been built based on the cloud image requirements that we have on OLVM. So it's a template 100% compatible with the cloud init options that you have on the OLVM web interface. And between them, so on the first boot, you have the option to, to define the VM host name, the time zone, authentication, uh, DNS, so the networking stuff, uh, as well as execute a custom script. And, and while executing a custom script, you can even evaluate to possibly deploy your own application or install photo packages, any kind of thing. So you can do really whatever you want while deploying your VM on top of Oracle Linux KVM and, and Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager. Uh, we are going to see soon the Oracle Linux 7 update 8 template. And we are also working on, on obviously on Oracle Linux 8 templates for, for uh, Oracle Linux KVM. Another, another important thing to know is that Oracle Linux KVM, it's a solution obviously that you can run today on-prem, but at the same time, the same kind of solution can run also on the Oracle Cloud, right? So I can run the same hypervisor on the Oracle Cloud. I can also run Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager on the Oracle Cloud. Uh, and this kind of thing allows you, if you want to, to have one unique hybrid cloud hypervisor because you can run the same solution on-prem and the same solution on cloud. You can think, for example, to run uh, the production environment on-prem into your own data center, the development environment on the Oracle Cloud with the same solution, with the same things. You can even evaluate to, for example, to have OLVM running on-prem, managing your KVM instance running on the Oracle Cloud. No problem. Uh, Self-hosted engine. So one of the features where we introduced the support into OLVM 4.3. Uh, what does it mean? With the self-hosted engine, you have a machine, a virtual machine, running on the host managed by that engine. Obviously, the self-hosted engine is a virtual machine running on the same cluster, but it's not managed in the same way uh, you, are, you are managing other VMs, right? So there are dedicated services on the, on the KVM host that uh, manage the high availability for the, the engine, so for the, your OLVM installation. So it's a particular VM running on your cluster managed by external services, and you also have a dedicated CLI to manage the, the self-hosted engine. Um, and what does, what, what does you get at the end with this kind of thing? First of all, you get uh, the opportunity to avoid uh, the, the, the requirement of, of another physical server or the requirement of another VM where to run the, the OLVM installation. First of all, and the second one is the availability. Automatically, if you have any kind of issue on the KVM host where your OLVM is running, the same OLVM virtual machine will be stopped and restarted on, on another KVM host. And at the same time, you also have the option to live migrate your hosted engine from one physical host to another one. For example, while doing uh, maintenance or while applying a any kind of update on your system. Uh, this kind of solution is based obviously on, on an appliance and the appliance is part of the installation. Uh, on our uh, Oracle Linux virtualization manager documentation, you can find all the steps on how to deploy the, the hosted manager. You have at the end two, two different options. One of them is to leverage cockpit, so a web interface that uh, allows you uh, with, a, with a wizard to, to deploy the hosted engine or by CLI, so by executing a, a hosted engine command on, on the KVM host. Uh, yeah, the, other, the other important tool uh, we, we, where we introduced the support is related to Virt B2B. Uh, Virt B2B, again, is another open source utility. It allows the, um, the automated migration or direct migration from Another hypervisor to Oracle Linux KVM and OLVM. Uh, other hypervisor could be Oracle VM or VMware. Uh, the cool option of this uh, utility is that 
you have a direct copy of your VM from the source hypervisor to Oracle Inscape VM. And while copying the VM, this kind of utility is also able to install the drivers required within the VM to get the same booting on Oracle Linux KVM. Uh, so we are talking obviously of virtual drivers. Uh, virtual drivers are there by default on, on a Linux installation. Uh, virtual drivers are available uh, from Oracle uh, for Microsoft Windows uh, VMs. And those drivers that we build for, for Oracle Linux KVM and Microsoft Windows on top of Oracle Linux KVM have been also certified by Microsoft. That means that you can run Microsoft Windows on top of Oracle Linux KVM supported by Microsoft. <clears throat> that said, uh, this one is maybe the faster migration uh, procedure to move from other advisors to Oracle Linux KVM. Manual export and import by leveraging the open virtualization format is still there, so can be leveraged. And we also have partner solutions Partner solution could be interesting when, when maybe you're going to migrate thousands and thousands of VMs, for example, from VMware to, to Oracle Linux KVM. Uh, yeah, this is the, the, what I said during the introduction. So we have a couple of documents dedicated to the hard partitioning. So the option to pay the Oracle licenses for Oracle products only for the CPUs used by your VM instead of paying the entire physical server. Uh, yeah, another another option that uh, is there with OLVM is related to the possible integration with the Enterprise Manager. Enterprise Manager is an administration and management uh, tool that we have at Oracle. It's dedicated to the Oracle products, starting from Oracle Linux or Oracle Linux KVM, Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager, arriving to Oracle Database, WebLogic, and even Oracle applications running running on top. So you, you can really have a single um, glass of pain management dedicated to the entire management of your infrastructure, starting from the hypervisor or arriving to, to the application. And this kind of solution can be even interesting uh, for, for customers today running Oracle VM because the same solution can be integrated into Oracle VM. So you can have enterprise manager on the top and then your Oracle VM pool or your Oracle VM infrastructure, your OLVM infrastructure, and Enterprise Manager can be used as the single point of monitoring of the entire infrastructure. Uh, yeah, so the one of the last things that I want to add is related to the, the, the support cost. Again, uh, we do not have any, any kind of particular options. We have Oracle Linux basic support and Oracle Linux premier support. With the Oracle Linux premier support, you have the support for everything that we today build for Oracle Linux, starting from the, the container solutions, cloud native tools, uh, uh, cloud native environment, uh, Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager, Gluster, K-Splice, uh, Virtualization, high availability, Kata Containers, Kubernetes. So all of them are part of the Oracle Linux Premier support. Uh, yeah, that's it. Just a question we have uh, mm -hmm. from the audience, uh, where, we, I, where I can find more information about the OEM Integration, capabilities, installation steps, plug, plugins, etc. Uh, yeah, you have to, to look for Enterprise Manager 13.4 documentation, and it's part of the virtualization plugin. It's there. Okay. Yep. Let's move forward. Thank you. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and related to the support, obviously, um, uh, the support team that we have at Oracle is dedicated to dedicated to Oracle Linux and virtualization solution. It's a 24 per seven support. We have one unique engineering team today working on our Linux and virtualization solutions. It's a support available on more than 140 countries. Uh, so it's the same portal where maybe you already got in touch with, in the past with, with other Oracle products. So there is no difference in terms of support of, of or enterprise support uh, for, for Oracle Linux and virtualization. Uh, there is no difference between the, um, Oracle Linux and virtualization and, and other Oracle products in terms of supportability and support interface. 
a quick uh, recap of the of the value that we see on the server virtualization at Oracle. Uh, yeah, one of the first things is related to the rapid application deployment of the full software stack. Um, zero downtime that you can have by case splice, and it's something that can be applied to the KVM host, to the management, so the engine, as well as your virtual machines running on top. Enterprise manager integration to have a single pane of class man management. The Oracle software certification. So today, all the Oracle teams, all the Oracle product teams, are working on top of Oracle Linux KVM while developing the, their solution, and obviously on top of Oracle Linux while developing their solution. And again, all the requirements that we address into into UEK and KVM coming from other teams internally at Oracle, like the Oracle Cloud team as well as the Oracle Accelerator team. Uh, that said. Last but not least, I also want to share some community technical articles. So those are articles that have been created by, by people at Oracle. Uh, you can even evaluate to create your own if you want. Uh, some of them are dedicated, for example, to uh, migrations, so how to migrate or how to automate the migration from VMware vSphere or from Oracle VM to Oracle Linux KVM. We have uh, one, one technical article dedicated to the automation by leveraging Ansible, monitoring, so the monitoring uh, with, with Oracle Enterprise Manager. Maybe it's also something that could be helpful based on the question that we received uh, before. Uh, use case, so we already had some customers that decided to run uh, Oracle Virtualization Manager as a VDI solution, also due to the specific period or specific uh, pandemic that we are, we are living now. Uh, yeah, and last but not least, the option to deploy and manage Oracle Linux KVM in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, right? Yeah, that said, uh, I would like to thank you so much. I'm also going to give you a quick overview of what I'm talking about. Um, let me see. Okay. So, yeah. First of all, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I first, I first, Simon to to show some live demo. So thank you for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. This one, this one is is my my personal development environment, if you want. Um, and and here I have uh, the the all the features that we we talked for the LVM for the free. So for example, here we have three physical servers. As you can see, we have uh, a symbol here. Okay. The gold one means that it's where I'm running the hosted engine. The silver ones are the servers that can guess the hosted engine, so the management solution. And in fact, if I go to the virtual machines, I have one, one called hosted engine, where I can see that it's running on server 51. And this one obviously can be even migrated to other servers, right? And this is the hosted engine. Uh, that said, for the storage, I have the cluster management from here. So this is my cluster volume named the VM store. I can see the bricks, right? All the free servers are leveraging uh, cluster. I can see also the, the volume options and I can manage, I can manage, really manage the cluster from here. I can even ed edit the options, right? Related to cluster. Uh, Geo replication. Is an option available here and also it's a supported option with cluster six on oracle linux this is the the maybe a very quick overview related to to uh ylvm 4.3 release uh the important or the cool thing is that the same solution can run on the cloud so this is my <coughs> my own oracle cloud as you can see i have uh, uh an olvm instance and two KVM hypervisors. This is the public IP address. So I have two different hosts managed by, by OLVM. And this one is a bare metal host running on the Oracle Cloud. This one is a VM running on the Oracle Cloud where I have nested hypervisor enabled. 
it's a huge VM because I have maybe 128 gigabyte, gigabyte of RAM and I also have uh, NVMe storage available here. The cool option here is that <clears throat> um, while working on the cloud, you on, on, on a bare metal instance, for example, or running on the Oracle cloud, you have, <clears throat> you can have more Vinix, right? Those are all Vinix created on, on my, on my bare metal system on the Oracle cloud. As you can see, some of them are named the VM, just because the cool thing here is that I can leverage SR IOV And by SRIOV, I can get my VMs leveraging the physical virtual, sorry, the virtual function running on the physical server. So my VM is now leveraging in a pass-through configuration the virtual function on the KVM host. What does it mean? It means that the VM leverage a virtual function on the KVM physical host and by leveraging that specific virtual function, I can get my own VMs on the Oracle Cloud having a public IP address. So at the end, just to, 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 to close the loop or to close the possible doubts that I'm creating, you have the option to run your own private cloud on the public cloud. This is the option that you can explore while running OLVM and Oracle Linux KVM on Oracle Cloud. As you can see, I have a huge list of Phoenix available on the physical server. If I'm not wrong, uh, on a bare metal server, you have the option to run 52 Phoenix. And so 52 Phoenix means possibly 52 VMs. Uh, and this is related to the bare metal system. Another, another option, if you are going to run um, KVM and OLVM by leveraging VM shapes, maybe because I do not need uh, 52 or maybe 128 cores. So I need a reduced amount of resources. I also have the option to leverage a VM shape. Here, what really changes is related to how I'm going to leverage the Phoenix. This kind of association is not more pass-through, it's port mirroring. And this kind of thing can be seen uh, here on the networking. So the cool point is that I can manage everything from the OLVM interface. I do not need any kind of CLI or custom script to possibly get everything managed. Everything can be done here. So this is the first example. It's related to the bare metal. And this is my VNIC for the bare metal. I enable the VLAN tag. I, add the, I declared it as a VM network. If I go to check the profile, I have pass-through, right? This is pass-through configuration for this VNIC. If I check the nested, the nested one that is running on the VM, so it's a nested virtualization, you can see that I have port mirroring enabled. Um, obviously, all those information, like for example, the VLAN tag, uh, the MAC address, uh, the IP address that I'm going to, to have for my VMs, are supplied by the Oracle Cloud interface. So if I check, for example, VM01, this VNIC created on the Oracle Cloud interface, here I can see the VLAN tag, I can see the public IP address, of this VNIC, I can see the full qualified domain name for the VNIC, the internal IP address. Um, and yeah, let's, let's do a very quick example. For example, this is my VM running on, on, on in a nested configuration. This is the public IP address, right, for this VM. Sorry. This is the public IP address. Now I'm going to share my terminal. And from here, yeah, I'm in the Oracle network, so I have to do this kind of thing. 
I'm now on my VM running there. I'm now on my VM running on my own private cloud running in the public cloud. And now here on the, on the Oracle cloud, I have OLVM and KVM servers running, all running on, on the cloud. No one stops me to run OLVM on-prem, managing also KVM on the cloud. I think that, uh, yeah, that's all. If you are interested in this kind of thing, uh, there is a dedicated article on how, on how to set up and how to manage uh, uh, OLKVM on the Oracle cloud. It's there on the slide deck that is going to be shared with you. Yeah, I think that that's all. I also suspect that maybe Powell, you were also going to, to share something with us, right? Give me a sec. Yes. So just to, you know, it's it's your time today, so I don't want to interrupt. But uh, <laughs> yeah. just for uh, let's say backup and recovery perspective, you should be familiar that also we as a store did. Uh, some additional works from this 4.3 version and we introduce for the Ovir itself um, community but also for the OLVM a dedicated module so I, I don't know if you're all familiar with that we have our own product called Store AV Protect which is dedicated for the KVM based environments um, and more uh, but just I will steal the two or three minutes maximum show you that instead of working on a vProtect console itself, uh, instead of, you know, looking for some specific specific virtual machines, uh, which can be related to the uh, Oracle VM or, or the KVM itself. Uh, so working, let's, let's find one, one of the VMs, mm, doesn't matter on which hypervisor is it. So instead of, you know, working here uh, from our console, we have a brilliant opportunity to go into the Ovid or the OAVM actually, and have the option to uh, see some dashboard, see virtual environments. Uh, so we can see from here the machines, which actually are related to the specific hypervisor. And from here, we can, uh, we can start the backup. We can start, so you can choose, we can start the backup. Uh, full or incremental, and we can decide it where we can send the data. It's the, we added the video, so Visual Data Optimizer File System, which is native for the Oracle Linux and uh, RHEL and the CentOS itself. We have a video and K-video. So you just, you don't need to, you know, uh, skip and, you know, jump out from the different UIs. You can do everything from here. Uh, not only from the task perspective, so we can also see that some task policies. We have a dashboard, virtual machines, task console. And right now, uh, in a two weeks, I will introduce building the policies and building the schedules the same like we have in our console. So you will feel the, the same way how, we, you, how you can build, uh, let's say, create policy or OLVM. Uh, policy you can assign then specific machines based on tags uh, based on specific cluster or just find uh, a VM uh, that you can actually add from the different host and in the rule you will decide where to put your data uh, I said about the video and you can decide it about the, the specific the specific uh, schedule so We'll, each release will do more for the OVUT and OLVM community and the Red Hat virtualization. So all of the projects which is based from the OVUT. And we've seen more and more interest in this specific functionality. So uh, just if you're using the OLVM or the OVUT, uh, just contact us. Uh, it's a free to download. And keep in mind that if, if you will see the let me get rid of the my VPN. So keep in mind that we have quite successful free version for, for the community uh, for the vProtect. So you can start without uh, a, you know losing any penny. So the free version gives you the ability to protect ten virtual machines with all features uh, and with the plugin for the Ovid and OLVM. Uh, 
only one restriction you will not have our official support and you will not get uh, you will not get the uh, integration with the IBM Dell EMC or Veritas but um, let's say 99% of the features are in a free and it's free forever so it, there is no a catch here so please um, uh, you know work as one of one of thousands of our users worldwide uh, which are using the KVM based backup based on our uh, solution. Uh, I, I got the question during um, during during also this slot, but we have few few more to the OLVM, Simon. I just want to emphasize that next webinar will be about the disaster recovery and how to migrate the data into the cloud. So we are preparing with Simon uh, some new slide deck and the demo for you. But today I just want to say that there is a module that can work on the OLVM or the Ovid itself. Uh, I can see more questions, so let's go to the QA. Uh, 